Hey guys, so this tutorial is all about animation layers. And if you've never used them before, they can come in really handy for certain situations. All right, so back about a year and a half ago, I was working on a show called Bubble Guppies. And the characters were little mermaids, and they're always, in every shot, they're floating. Because they're in, in a, an underwater world. So they're always cycling, they're always swimming or floating. So I started using animation layers for the acting part. And I'll show you why in this shot here I have with my unnamed superhero character in our New York City block set. And you can see he's just drifting there on the spot. There's some real subtle animation on him, but if we select all of his controls, you can see that on the timeline there's a bunch of keys. So say for example I want to have him delivering a line of dialogue or reacting to something, we have to set some poses on top of this drifting cycle. So our timeline's littered with all kinds of keys and you can see all the animation curves in the graph editor here. If I wanted to layer in some, some animation on top of this, I'd have to maybe delete or modify some of these keys and just mess around with this quite a bit. I can do it, but adding an animation layer on top of this drift cycle just makes life a lot easier. So I always say it's like an untangling of all the strings and then having to reorganize them. Instead of having to, to modify all these keys to set poses and get the SM acting on top of this drift cycle, we can create an animation layer. Let's head over to the channel box area here on the right. All right, so we have a render layer and then we have our anim layer. So if you click on the animation layer, so what we're going to do here is we're going to create a new animation layer with all the controls for our character and it's going to give us a brand new timeline. So you see this timeline at the bottom. This one, this is our base timeline and it contains all the keys for the drift cycle. So we're going to, it's almost like throwing a new piece of paper on top and we're going to just um, have a clean timeline. Okay, so I'm going to select all of his controls with my button here and I'm going to make sure I grab his master control too. We're going to hold shift down and select his master control as well. And then we're going to go to the button on the far right here under the animation layers tab. With all these controls selected, when we click on that, it's going to put all these controls on a new animation layer. Alright, so as soon as we do that, you can see we have this, these two new layers appear. And if we click on base layer, you can see it has all of our keys on the timeline. And we can see all the curves in the graph editor. And this is our drift cycle. <clears throat> then we see a new layer on top. Just by default, it's called anim layer 1. That's going to be a brand new timeline with no keys on it. We can double click that, let's give it a name, let's call it acting. So basically I'm going to have all my animation on this layer, all my acting animation on this layer. And the only thing the base layer has on it is the drift cycle. And I'm just going to animate the master first, and I'm going to have him start in the background, and we'll have him fly in. So I'm just going to fast forward to do some animation, and you can see how it works. Still working in the acting layer. Uh, I just used his master control to animate his basic movement. I'm gonna have him come up from behind the billboard and fly toward camera. So we just have his master control animating there. And then we can do some body animation on him as well, all on the acting layer and still maintaining all the drifting on the base layer. All right, so I've gone through and completed some blocking animation on his master and all of his controls. I just had him fly up from behind the billboard and zoom into frame. I think that's all we're gonna do here. He sort of anticipates and flies forward. With all of his controls selected, you can see we have all this animation happening on the acting layer. If I go back to the base layer, these are all the keys for his hover cycle. So the hover cycle is still taking place through all this time, but you don't notice it because he's, he's moving so quickly, right? With all of his controls selected, if we go back to the acting layer, it'll just show us the keys for all this action. And another cool thing about animation layers, you can actually turn them down. So with the acting layer selected, you'll notice a little slider at the bottom here where it says wait, and it's at one. You can actually drag the slider. If we drag it all the way to zero, it completely deactivates all the animation on the acting layer and he's just drifting there again. If I turn it up to about half, It'll only display about half of the animation that I've done on the acting layer. You can actually turn up and down how much of the animation on the acting layer you've done. He comes up from in front of the billboard. It only shows you about half of what I've done, which actually looks looks pretty cool too. He just sort of drifts forward. If 
finally put it to about 0.1 or 2 here. So the ability to turn your animation up or down on the new layer is really handy. Especially in production if you get a revision, sometimes you can do a revision on a new layer and if they don't like it you can revert back to the old version. Anyhow, it's a really cool feature having that slider there. Now one last thing I want to say about animation layers is you don't want to go hog wild and use them all the time. I would say that you really want to pick and choose the situations where you use it. If you're using it in production, it doesn't work with, with some productions, so you, you, you'd want to, um, you can still use it, but you just have to merge the layers together. If you're, you're working in production and you ask if you can use layers and they say it's okay, then you can leave the layers separated like this. But if they ask you not to use layers or you need to merge them for some reason, you can shift select both layers, right click, and then choose merge layers. If I release on that, you'll see the time marker go across the timeline, and then it's going to merge them into one base layer. And there it is. So now we're back to just one layer. If I select his controls, the animation's still there, but it has, now we're back to one timeline with all of his actions and the hover cycle. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope it helps. Have a great day.